a new institute on Capitol Hill is working to protect the rights of those serving in Catholic health care. Launching in November, the Catholic Healthcare Leadership Alliance's Public Policy and Advocacy Institute will work with legislators on the federal and state level to advance fundamental principles of Catholic health care. Namely, they'll work to protect the conscience rights of Catholic health care workers who wish to opt out of performing abortions and transgender surgeries or prescribing birth control. The announcement comes after the Biden administration proposed changes to weaken conscience protections earlier this year, a move many pro-life advocates believe could force doctors to provide abortions. Grace Marie Turner joins us now. She is the president of the Galen Institute. Grace Marie, thank you for being here. Why is there a need for this new institute now? What issues do Catholic medical professionals face when they refuse a procedure on religious grounds? There are so many violations of conscience rights for physicians who want to, and, and other medical professions who want to practice according to their faith, mm -hmm. and for patients who want to have have physicians and medical medical professionals that will look out for their interests and their ethical and moral interests. And so often, as we have seen far too 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 many times, the state is intervening in that from the Little Sisters of the Poor to directives that doctors have to perform procedures in order to be able to keep their licenses that they're medically, that are ethically re reprehensible to them. So there absolutely needs to be a strong voice to for these for those medical professionals to the policymakers who are who are writing those laws and writing those regulations to stop them to allow people to practice according to their faith. Absolutely. And tell us about the Galen Institute and how you helped in the creation of this Institute of Public Policy and Advocacy. I have worked for a long time with Dr. Steve White, who was president of the Catholic Medical Association, then head of their health policy committee, and then also is the founder of the Catholic Healthcare Leadership Alliance. Mm -hmm. He really has a vision for making sure that the voices mm -hmm. of Catholic leaders are heard in the policy debate. And as they came to Washington, they came to Washington last this last spring to introduce the larger alliance. And they met with many members of Congress who've introduced legislation and certainly supported legislation that protects life, that protects conscience, and that just basically says we must protect religious liberty. But they said they were so glad to see an organization that really is like a chorus. They, they have heard a lot of individual voices, but this is a chorus of voices. But they also need recommendations for, okay, what, what do we need to, what laws do we need to pass? What regulations need to be implemented? What's on the radar screen that we should be worried about that could be a threat? Mm -hmm. So that's really what the Institute does. It really creates ideas for advocacy in public policy and also provides ideas for members to advance legislation, but also to warn them of threats that they see coming so that they can they can be aware and take to take proactive um, action. Well, that's very encouraging. It seems like the movement is leveling up on this front. Grace Marie, even with conscience protections in place, Catholic healthcare workers can face judgment or even harassment in the workforce, in their own workplace, for sharing their beliefs. So how else can they really be supported in their life-saving and life-affirming work, aside from all of the great work that's being done to enact laws on these, on these fronts? You know, I've, I've always throughout my whole career at the Galen Institute, and you asked earlier about the Galen Institute, we are a public policy institution that supports patient-centered health policy. And I've worked with Dr. White and many others together for a long time. But this is really an effort to, to help doctors who feel so isolated. You know, they know that, that the policies that they're now having to live under are not right. But, but a single voice is really hard for members to hear. And so so joining the Catholic Healthcare Leadership Alliance, supporting its Institute for Public Policy Research and Advocacy is very important. And the, the advocacy part of the Institute for Public Policy is really important because that's going to be the vehicle for doctors to be able to get together through the grassroots efforts to be able to have their voices heard and to get educated on what 
what legislative initiatives might they want to support if they knew about them? Sometimes there's fledgling ideas. Sure. Or what threats are they are presented that they need to make sure their legislators and, and others, both at the state and federal level, are aware of these threats. So it's really at a chance to give medical professionals not only representation, but a larger voice in the policy debate. Of course. Well, there's certainly strength in numbers, and we're grateful that you're giving these doctors a place to go to. Grace Marie Turner of the Galen Institute, thank you for joining us. Joining us.